I'm like, I'm, wow, is this our first time having such problems? Usually we're really good at this. I know, I'm as good as you teach me, but I was like, I was pushing the thing and then it went away. I'm like, wait. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so good thing our focus is skin and not technology. Oh Lord, I know. And then you go, I'm sending it in an eye bite. And I thought, I wonder what that is. It's me not, it's me not knowing how to spell <laughs> or like <laughs> typing too fast and then coming back. Okay. Well, thank how are you, you for having me again. Hi, I'm great. Thanks. Thank you for real. Thank you for taking time to do this again. I have yeah. a lot of people that are pretty um, excited to hear more about like the eczema situation. Yeah. The eczema situation is a serious situation, you guys. <laughs> Yes, it is. As yes, it is. Especially when know. it gets on people's hands. You Well, you helped me with a client who had the really bad dyshydrotic eczema on her hands who was a hairstylist or is yeah. a hairstylist. She's not dead. Yeah. Um, and uh, so she's back to back to doing hair again. So that's good. Yeah, that's good. Hopefully she got rid of, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but for, I don't have eczema issues, but I have had a lot of people in the cosmetology industry that have had severe reactions like that with their hands. But there's actually, there are a couple of brands. One of them is called Organic Salon Systems. Now, obviously we can't have a, a hair dye that's fully organic, but it's formaldehyde free. It doesn't have ammonia in it. Oh. It's just way, way better. So like, that's what I get my gray hairs dyed with. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> but for anyone that that's actually in that industry or if you guys ever have to happen to come across someone that you know talks about how they work at a salon and break out like getting rid of those chemicals is so important I can't and that imagine. can literally change the whole situation so sometimes it is from a topical exposure and other times it's an internal exposure okay but so both scenarios though it is both based in toxins okay so Like sometimes atopic dermatitis and eczema kind of present with similar symptoms. Oh, we have a, okay, there you are. I was like, there was a delay. I'm not sure if you heard what I was going to ask you, but I was going to ask you, so atopic dermatitis and eczema are two different things because why? Um, you know, that's okay. This is what I think. When you touch something and have a reaction and you continue to touch it, mm -hmm. I kind of think. I think that could also be eczema, but I think it's more of an initial reaction. Okay. Um, um you know, I might, not, I actually might not have a good answer to this question. I they mean, just have... go, ahead. go ahead. Oh no. <laughs> I'm just thinking like, let's say you don't know any better and you're cleaning your counter with Clorox or something and you're constantly like breaking out here. I think that that could be the same as eczema, even though they call it atopic dermatitis. That means it's coming from a topical right. interaction, right. but it still kind of is causing eczema. It's not hives because that would go no. away. Right. It's actually causing the same like flaky yuckiness. Exactly. So I kind of think it, it's maybe the same. My, they just wanted an extra special term. It's just, <laughs> it's just the difference is the toxins are coming in topically, topically. like something you're touching and versus atopic. right. Yeah. yeah, versus regular eczema would be coming from inside that your body's pushing it out the skin. Right. Okay. That's what I, that was my theory on it. But That's what I think, yeah. Okay, Good cool. question. You try to stump me? <laughs> no, I'm not. I just need if you like, <laughs> I just was thinking like, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too. I'm like atopic is because it's like, mm -hmm. it came in contact with your skin mm -hmm. and eczema is more of like an internal thing, like your body having whether it's an overabundance of histamines or toxins or whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. But if you want to, I'm going to just let you take over. Yeah. And okay. if I think of questions yeah. or if I see yeah. questions, okay. um, we'll Perfect. get to them. Perfect. Yeah. So from my position and my clinical experience, eczema is an overburdened immune system that's having trouble getting rid of the toxins, right? So if you're physically putting your arms down on a table that's been cleaned with something bad over and over again, the toxins are kind of just getting trapped and you're having a reaction at the skin, which could still look the same as eczema, right? But we, obviously in that scenario, all you have to do is get rid of the root cause, which would be the toxin that you're touching. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that wouldn't be too hard to figure out. But I have some people that have said like, oh, I was you know, diagnosed with atopic dermatitis, but it's on different places of the body and they try to you know, change their 
laundry detergent, which side note, Tide Free and Clear and all those Free and Clear brands, they're still toxic. Just because it doesn't have perfume and dye doesn't mean it's non-toxic. It's still a chemical surfactant and full of trash. Real natural soap brands are going to have soap and essential oils and be plant-based. So free and clear is a scam. So we want to stay away from that. We want to actually get on something that's natural and plant-based. Okay. So in some cases when they're like, oh yeah, I switched to Tide free and clear. And I'm like, okay, you're a step in, your foot's in the door. Right. Um, but you know, there's a lot of things we have to clean up like in that scenario. Right. So the laundry detergent, anything they're spraying their home with, People don't even realize, I mean, people just, there's toxins everywhere. So you really have to clean that up. And then a lot of times, if it really is atopic dermatitis, it will clear right. when you take out the root cause. 100%. The problem with eczema is that this is coming from inside toxins that your body is pushing out through the skin. And this is a lot more difficult. It can be done. Our, you know, our products work great on it. But there's, um, there's a lot more going on with people understanding like why there's so many toxins in, in the body in the first place. So let's start with who is the biggest victim of eczema right now? It's newborns. So I, we have, yeah. yeah. And when we were growing up, Jen, we didn't have, I didn't have friends with eczema. I had one teacher that had eczema. I remember uh -huh. that. And uh -huh. she was, she was kind of overweight, probably not very healthy, uh -huh. I would assume. Um, and it was really bad. I remember she would like scratch and it would flake everywhere and we, everyone would, was grossed out. Okay. So now eczema is very common. Yeah. And that's what your doctor will tell you. So when your baby starts expressing eczema, the doctors will say, don't worry, this is common. That doesn't mean that it's normal just because it's happening all the time. Doesn't mean it's normal. So moms get this thing in their, their head where they're like, it's fine. It'll clear. And it might. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about what's happening to babies that could be causing eczema. Yes. Have I ever talked about umbilical cord blood testing? No. Okay. So I think when I first read this statistic like seven to 10 years ago, they were saying that over 300 toxins are in the average baby's umbilical cord blood. 300. Now I saw a statistic again and it was over 900. Wow. So when you're pregnant, this is why it's very important to detox for at least a year before you become pregnant. If you can, if you can plan this and you know you're planning <laughs> right. to become pregnant, detox, take a break, do another detox, take a break, do fasting, like water fasting. You like really do things to clean out your body because as soon as you get a baby in there, all of your, whatever's in your blood is going to that baby. Right. Heavy metals pesticides, mm -hmm. uh, prescription drugs, all the crap in our water, all it's all yeah. in our blood, glyphosate, it's all, so that's going into our baby. Then baby comes out, goes on the breast. Breast is also a detox pathway on a woman. So whatever else you wanna detox and the body's like, oh, that pathway is open. Let's go ahead and give <laughs> stuff at the breast milk. <laughs> so then you're giving toxins to the baby. So one of the root causes of eczema, in my opinion, is going to be what I call inherited toxins from the mother, right? Mm -hmm. Just toxins you're being exposed to. Mm -hmm. There's also radiation. You know, in China, they recommend that women who are pregnant wear an EMF, like those EMF shirts that go over the belly. Wow. So there's EMF clothing that's available now. And it's basically, if you think of elect, um, if you think of radiation like a light, it's just an invisible form of light. Mm -hmm. If you put this kind of clothing over it, it's just like putting on a lampshade. It's not gonna fully block mm -hmm. it, but it's shading out that light a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that's really important too, because exposure to radiation can break down all kinds of things in the body and cellular functions, right? right? Yeah. So we have what's going on in the belly with mom. Then we come out of the belly and what's the first thing that happens to us? They wanna vaccinate us. <laughs> so if you have, I really, I want people to pay attention to this because this is what I ask my moms. Did they come out with eczema on their body right then when they were born? Right. Some will say yes. Then we know we're, we're mostly dealing with inherited toxins from the mom. Others, if you really, you know, you have to, you have to do some investigating with this. They will realize that it didn't happen until after the vaccination process started. So uh -oh. my position is that it's caused by inherited toxins from the mother and vaccines or both. And a lot of people don't like that, but that's what I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. I'm keeping it real. Right. So um, eczema really is an overburdened immune system. 
a little baby yes. that's just been born that just gets shot up. If you think it works fine, that's great. It's also, but what's also in there is formaldehyde and heavy metals and peanut oil. And it, there's all this no. shit in oh, there yeah. that is toxic to your child, that this is a fact. Mm -hmm. If you were to call poison control and just say, oh my gosh, my kid's been exposed to and named all the, the ingredients in a vaccine, they would say, oh my God, you have to take it to a hospital. Mm -hmm. Like there's, yeah. it's toxic. Whether you think vaccines work or not, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you it's, they're toxic. Mm -hmm. When you constantly inject toxins into your baby's blood and then they get eczema, how do you think it got right. there? <laughs> right? Because yeah. they, yeah. Yeah. So the, well, uh, the body is over immune with, overburdened with toxins. The immune system's trying to get it out. So with skin naturopathics, what we want to do is number one, the symptom we want to control. So we use the heat clear and the eczema histoclear. That's going to help with the itching and the pain. Right. You can use this on newborn babies too. You can just mm -hmm. open up the capsule, put it in some of your breast milk, shake it up in a little bottle and give that. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's totally safe. It's just plants. And what's so the heat clear? The what? So the eczema heat clear. So that's okay. going to be for like hot, oh. red, red inflamed nice. conditions. Yeah. Right. And yeah. then the histoclear is just basically like a anti-itch formula. So it's an okay. antihistamine. Um, but it's not like giving a Benadryl, right? It's more natural. It just has anti-itch herbs in it. Mm -hmm. So that's totally safe for wow. giving little ones and toddlers. That's and awesome. once they get older, I have moms that like put it in applesauce or whatever. Okay. Um, but if you do have a baby with eczema, we really want to make sure that this child's not being brought up on Capri Sun and fruit roll-ups and chicken nuggets and French fries and stuff, right? right. Like we need to make sure our kids are having real food, food in their right. in their diet. And I right. know that I understand how hard this is for moms. Like I hear all the time, well, they won't eat this. They won't eat this. They will eat what you prepare them. As long as when they're young, you don't start with all the junk and get them right. to sugar and stuff. Yeah. So um, as they get older, sometimes the eczema will clear. Sometimes it won't. But really, um, we have to make sure that the gut isn't leaking because then more junk's getting out. But the point is we want to unburden the immune system with all the things that are overburdening it. Right. So as soon as we are able, we want to detox. So we can't do that on small kids. But once they get older and they're still having problems, like once we get into teenage years or later, we can detox a lot. We give them the eczema, heat clear, and histoclear. And then we work on the gut and the diet. Mm -hmm. Um, topical things that are good. Here's another thing. Everybody's on the stupid CeraVe crap. They are. <laughs> and. <laughs> or the, like, it went from Cetaphil, like doctors recommending Cetaphil. And then yeah, now yeah. it's CeraVe. And like, they yeah. say you can get ceramides from external. I'm like, okay, well, I understand that ceramides only come from the phytonutrients of the plants that are created in the digestive system and the enzyme process, and then they go out to the skin. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I don't, I'm sure there's like two good ingredients in there. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done the research. I'm like, yeah, oh, there's like, yeah. and it's at like the bottom of the deck. It's not like yeah. at the top of the deck. It's yeah. at the bottom of the deck. But if you read this, now we're putting more toxins yes. on a a condition that is already a toxic condition. Correct. So that is the last thing we want to be doing. And it's not people's fault. They believe the commercial. Number or one, the it is number one recommended by dermatologists. So is taking drugs and getting vaccines and doing all those other things and not caring about your diet, right? So <laughs> we want to stay away from those things. We want to stay away from toxins, but we want to detox because we want the body to understand that the other elimination pathways are open colon, the liver, the kidneys, we want to clean out the lymph. That's what our detox does. Uh -huh. That way we're unburdening the lymphatics in the skin. So stuff can hopefully go out the way it's supposed to yeah. heal the gut. So we don't have anything leaking out, get right. rid of any external factors. And you know, that usually makes a pretty good situation for eczema. But topically, um, there was a really good company I met recently. Uh, they're called Abby Rose, the creators. She heard, had a daughter with eczema. So she made this really nice um, oil-based topical that has calendula in it and some other anti-itch herbs. So I love that company, Abby Rose. It's just abbyrose.com, A-B-B-E-Y Rose. I don't have any affiliation with them. They were just my I've neighbor actually, at a trade show. I thought their stuff was cool. Yeah, I think oh, yeah, I've good. recommended people to her, yeah. like, for, well, I mean, I have a pretty good product, too, from the line that I carry, but um, I think, like, she's been, her, that name's been brought up a couple of times. Yeah, so really 
getting out there, they really focus on like, like they have one product in like a smaller or medium, they have a soap, they have a smaller mm -hmm. version, like an oil mm -hmm. version, but um, that one is, is really good. It's approved by the Eczema Foundation. Um, it's going to help relieve it. It's not going to get rid of the root cause, which is the right. toxic piece, right? Just really but at least we're not symptom. using, yeah, exactly. At least we're not using trash on our skin, which we won't really I do to have, avoid. Since we're talking about this, um, I just met with a friend of mine and she just had a baby grandson and it was interesting because she said, um, and it was a vaginal birth, um, but she said that they didn't wash the baby. Like the baby didn't get a bath until he got home and now he has a rash all over his body. And I was like, oh, well, my first thought was, okay, well, that is some, like, the vaginal fluids and things like that are really great for microbiome activity and things like that. So I'm like, okay, are they, like, doing, like, this healthy thing where they're, like, mm -hmm. let the baby sit in the fluids? But, like, when she said the baby sat in fluids for, like, the whole two days or so that the mom was there, and then it got home and got a bath, and then it had a rash, I'm like, oh. And I asked, is it red? And like, I was like, that sounds like a full body over toxin thing, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I don't know. That was, it tripped trip me out. Yeah. I was like, okay. Okay. So you're, I would think the same thing. Like, don't wash the baby. Yeah. Don't wash the baby. That's a good thing. Yeah. Like leave all the, leave all the good stuff. Yeah. But, um, you know, depending on what their city water situation is, yeah. it could have been, they could have been having a reaction, all that chlorine and all the crap in the water. Who knows? Yeah. So did the rash okay. go away? No, it's still there. Um, when was the baby board? I think last weekend. The rash is still okay. there. Okay. Um, put him on the heat clear. Yeah. Clear. Just put it in his milk. Put it in his milk. It's okay. not gonna hurt him. Just okay. break up with a capsule and put like a little third of a capsule in there. Okay. Yeah. I'll let her know. Thank mm -hmm. you. And then make sure she's not using any trash. <laughs> well, <I> mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know it's hard. Baby baby steps with people. Um, yeah, like when my son was a little guy, he, I fed him pretty well. Like, I mean, I wasn't that mom that like smashed up all his food or anything, but kind of. And then soon as like, and he would eat like salmon and veggies and he just, yeah. he never really liked bananas, yeah. but like, then he got into school and that's where shit went downhill. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. I always, you know, this whole idea of a kid's menu is so stupid. Your kids should not be ordering off these stupid kid men kids menus. Yeah. Just give them a portion of what you are eating at yeah. while you're out. Yeah, that's um, what he would do. He would eat the salmon. I was so proud of him. And then like huh. all of a sudden he just hated. <laughs> yeah, they don't, if they don't know what all this other junk is, and not once in a while, obviously you're going to take them to a kid's party. There's going to be stuff yeah. around and that's okay in moderation. Yeah. But they shouldn't be eating all this white food, fried food that's on the kids menu. It's, it's, right. it's like drinking the soda, oh, just because it's caffeine free because it's spray, it's not okay. It's, it is not okay. These things the are all, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, people, well, I just blows my mind how they let the kids drink spray, all the juice pouches, and things like that. And I like that. kind of look, yeah. I'm not judging, but I'm like, oh, so. Yeah. And when I look at that, I think, oh, you're going to be a client in about 20 years That's because the you're thing, gonna, you guys, like you're going to be a gut client because, yeah. The gut problems don't happen overnight. It is an accumulation mm -hmm. of what we've eaten. And it like, yeah. I got into like the whole gut health, I don't know, because I was having health issues. And then I went down this huge rabbit hole and now I'm super obsessed with the microbiome, but like yeah. how many things that it contributes to is like just amazing. Like yeah. from skin issues to hormone issues to brain issues there was like always so a many relationship things. to the yeah. gut there was always a relationship it literally is our center yeah you know well it's like our brain it's like our first brain and this is our second brain yeah exactly you yeah. know it's the whole pay now or pay later you can pay now and be difficult yeah. and tell your kids nope we're gonna get healthy stuff and you can pay for organic food and do the things do the things right it's harder and it's more expensive mm -hmm. pay now or pay later it's up to you yep. that's kind of how i tell it to people and then they're like oh that makes sense yeah um so you know we have the eczema thing happening when we're the kids are expressing it younger then we have some people that like will get eczema later right. and we don't know what's going on this but something's going on with an overburdened immune system so the things that burden our immune system are stuff that doesn't belong mm -hmm. in there it's anything that's non-self this is not that does not apply to pathogens. We are full of pathogens. Non-self is gonna be a toxin. Mm -hmm. um, it can also be an allergen, okay. right? So a pollen or something. But when it's, when it, we just really need to do a discovery 
process with our clients, right? We need to figure out if it, if it is a baby, when exactly did the eczema happen? And sometimes they're like, oh, I don't know. And I'm like, no, think about it. Did he come out and you held him and he had patches on his skin uh -huh. where it happened after, uh -huh. right? So the more people start realizing this, oh yeah, it did happen after the vaccines or whatever. Uh -huh. This is, you know, the better we can help them understand that this is not the way that we need to deal with stuff. There's also some research that was done that people ask me a lot about, and that is, um, the enzyme that they're saying is missing in people that have eczema. Have you heard this? Uh -huh. So I'd love to hear do you more. Know the, do you know the name of the enzyme? I should have looked it up before, but I was, I was on a call. Yeah, but I'll grab my computer. <laughs> okay. So you guys, we'll look it up. We'll figure it out for you. But um, when I was researching this enzyme, what I found is that the root, so they're saying that if you don't make this enzyme, that your skin is going to let toxins through more easily so that it would t cause eczema. So they're saying like, if you have a genetic mutation where you don't make this enzyme, it doesn't break down the toxins and it more easily gets through the skin and like get comes, can let the toxins out. Okay. But what is the key word? The root cause is still the toxins, still toxins. right? Yeah. So okay. even if you don't have the enzyme, it's still a toxic issue missing it's, it's just that you're more likely to let toxins out of your skin because you don't have the enzyme but we it's still a toxic issue so don't be fooled so we still have to detox and unburden the immune system uh so that's a really important thing B is possibly correlated with itchiness uh granzyme b does that sound yeah. familiar researchers found that granzyme b weakens the skin barrier by cleaving through the proteins holding cells together making it easier for allergens well, then that just goes along with acetate too, because we need acetate to keep the barrier nice and healthy as well. Yeah. So lots of things. So from a topical standpoint, so let's go back to that. So I love the Abby Rose products. Yeah. Um, honestly, if, I, if you guys, you can, olive oil. Really? Is great. Yeah. If you're ever in a pinch and you're just like, I don't have something and my skin is so dry and it's bothering me, you can put some olive oil on there. Oh, nice. Um, there are other, there's a really good brand called Neogenesis. I'm actually going to work with them on getting like a skin repair cream labeled with, oh, exciting. Kind of like co yeah, awesome. with them, but they make stem cell based products that are real stem cells, not the Apple stem cells. Okay. And their deck is so clean. So you know how usually in the skincare space, when we find something that has all the fun active ingredients, uh -huh. it also has like the phenohexaethanol and the PEG steroid and the, all that, that yeah. stuff. Um, they don't have anything bad in there. They also have urea in there, which usually is a no, but theirs is, oh gosh, he was telling me it's actual, the, it's the kind that we make that our it's body It's the good makes. stuff. Yeah. It's the good nice. stuff. Yeah. We make there's urea. there's yeah. some from urine yeah. though. Like there's well, some from animal urine that they'll put in cosmetics. Oh my gosh. And that's, and actually that's how they make a form of progesterone pills. It's from like a horse urine. I know cra the crazy things you learn, but so anyways, this brand Neogenesis, uh -huh. some of the most amazing before and after pictures I've seen on that barrier uh, repair. Uh -huh. So that's a good brand. Also topically, there is a company, um, it's called O2 Skin Pro. It's a pure oxygen spray. Um, that will heal so many things. Is that so legit? There's a lot of, I've seen that. Is, yeah. Is that's pretty legit then? Yeah. So you okay. can get that through EF Tropics is the distributor for that. They're here in Florida. Who is it? Um, EF Tropics. And um, so they distribute the O2 Skin Pro that, you know, you could use on any sort of cut, any abrasion, post some sort of procedure, but it really, he I just like things that heal the skin. Okay is what I want you guys yeah. to, like there, there are all these things, you know, salves are great. You can go to Whole Foods and just say, Hey, can I get like an anti-itch salve? Um, so there's just, there are all these great things that we can put on topically besides just like the CeraVe and the regular lotions and stuff. Yeah. You know, even well, that's like awesome. Aveeno, all that stuff is crap. The one safe, the one brand that I do like, it's the Shea Moisture brand that you can get like at Target. And it's inexpensive. So they make hair products. They make all kinds of stuff. Oh. They make skincare stuff. And that. it's inexpensive. It's like $10 for stuff. But that would be, that would be like the only safe brand that I think is on the shelf at a Target oh, yeah. or something. Otherwise, it's all crap. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just, um, well, you know, that struggles real too for the client that I don't mean to digress, but like the acne clients, like 
Well, my doctor told me to do the CeraVe while he's peeling my face off chemically with all of the other shit, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's not really doing anything. It's not really treating anything. Like, it's just making yeah. sure your face doesn't do anything further. Yeah. So Also with eczema, you guys, really, really important to understand the client's food sensitivities. Um, what's interesting about a food sensitivity test, the more things that they are sensitive to, is a bigger indicator that their gut is leaking and impaired. 100%. Because we don't yeah. naturally have all these sensitivities. Right. If your health, if your gut is really healthy, you might have a couple of real sensitivities that like where it's causing a histamine response. But if you're, if that lab picks up a histamine response and an IgG response on like 20 foods or like on all the major foods, that's just like your gut is messed up. Your gut is messed 100%. up. That's you have to yeah. heal it. Yeah. And then you can retake that food sensitivity test later down the line. But yeah. food sensitivities is really important on eczema. And you offer that, right? right? Yes. So we partner with a company called um, York Test. They're out of the UK. Mm -hmm. And it's so you can get it off the website, like skinnaturopathics.com. You can just go and order one there. Or if you're an esthetician, um, just reach out to me and I will open an account for you with them, which is what you want because the test itself is like our cost is 89, but uh -huh. you could sell it at your practice for 149. So you're taking okay. the margin on that sale, okay. which is good. And then you get the client's results. Oh, so awesome. that becomes, it becomes more of, you know, now you're consulting your client. It becomes more a part of your services and process instead of just like, Oh, go take every really well. Right. And you know, just avoid oh, that's things. so good to know. Cause I've been yeah. looking for one. Yeah. To offer like not just my skin clients, but like my health coaching client as yeah. well. So that's awesome. So I just need to contact you to yeah. have them. Okay. So um so you guys my email if anyone ever wants to get a hold of me, it's sales at skinnaturopathics.com and I will just hook you up with the rep over there to get an account going. And it's really easy. You don't have to stop them or anything. You just drop ship it to the client and then you get the results. Yeah, what's interesting. So working with the um the girl that I had that had the eczema on her hands and I have another, mm -hmm. there's another guy in one of my networking groups and he showed me his hand. I'm like, that's this hydratic eczema. He's all, yeah, the doctor just told me that. I'm like, well, um, and I go, are you, I was like, do you want to do it my way? Or are you going to do it the doctor's way? Cause I try not to like step on toes. Totally. You will give them the option. Give yeah. The just like, he, he didn't really come to me. He was just sitting next to me and he's all look at my hands. I was like, Oh, that's this hydratic eczema. And he goes, Oh, and I, he goes, yeah, the doctor just told me that. I was like, well, do you want some medicine for that? Or are you, or do you, I mean, do you want like a natural way? Or are you going to go like the top, like, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And he said, he didn't know. So that's the hard part is like the whole narrative, like with things is I, I got to do what the doctor says. I got to mm -hmm. do what the doctor says, yeah. or I'm going to take the medicine. Cause that's what he told me to. But funny thing is, is like I'm just an esthetician, but I already know it by looking at it, what it is like, not, yeah. not to do my own horn or anything, but like, it's like, that's what that is. I know how to fix it because I just helped someone like, mm -hmm. yeah. but when we were, when I was working with her, we also did like a fecal test and her histamine was like off mm -hmm. the charts. Yeah. So I was like, okay, yeah. so we're going to do like yeah. some histoclear on this. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. we have to clean your gut up yeah. because there's something that's happening. But she was like, she also correlated it to like, you know, I didn't have this problem until I got the COVID vaccine. Uh, oh yeah. See, and that's what the vaccines do. They overburden the immune system. Yeah. Your immune system's going to respond. It's going to try yeah. to get that vaccine out. Yeah. And some people, depending on your situation, you're going to detox one way or the other. You're gonna do yeah. Gonna and just everybody does it differently. Out. 100%. Yeah. Like, that's what I try yeah. to tell people. They're like, well, my eczema is on my hand, not my face. I'm like, it doesn't matter. It's still skin. It has to come out somewhere. Yeah. Like, this often, is an organ. Yeah. Yeah. Oftentimes, the reason it's on our extremities, mm -hmm. um, it's just harder to get new, fresh blood all the way there. It's just the furthest away. Ah, that makes you know? sense. So, yeah. So um, that's why we want to really detox the lymphatic yep. and all the blood. So the skin detox part, our formula yeah. Um, that really is a blood and lymphatic detox. That just doesn't sound as pretty as skin detox, <laughs> but that really is going to go in and clean out all that blood. So okay. even though That's the blood awesome. is like not, you know, it's not circulating as well from the extremities, it's going to at least try to get new blood to there. Um, our new detox, instead of being three bottles, I'm putting everything in one big bottle. Oh, cool. So it'll just be the derma detox. 
So, and then I'll have instructions for like first time detox, light detox, maintenance okay. detox. So you can kind of play a little bit more with that. Oh. But eczema, eczema really needs to detox until it's clear. It might take 90 days. It might take six months. When you are detoxing, it's important to remember that some of the good stuff is coming out with the bad. So it's good to do like a 30 days, maybe rest for three to five days, then do it again if we need to. But you just got to keep going until the skin is clearing up. Okay. We're working on the gut in the meantime. So with Skin Naturopathics, we're doing our eczema heat clear, eczema histoclear. We're doing the detox and then we're doing the probiotic. We're doing the enzyme and we're doing the gut repair formula. Wow. Um, sorry, digestive support formula. And so, you know, that dose is only like two capsules per meal, but maybe in the beginning, and if the eczema is bad, maybe they need six caps, caps per meal because okay. that really works on the intestinal integrity. Mm -hmm. um, and over time, it's, it's really going to clear. You got to clean up their diet, get rid of food sensitivities. It's right. hard. Right. It's so much easier for someone to go and just get the drug. But guess what? The drug will never 100% clear you. And I know this because I talk to the drug, drug rep, reps constantly at all these shows. Mm -hmm. You will not get 100% clear. Of course not. It's not made to fix you. Yeah. <laughs> it's made to like, so, but, uh, it's made to just relieve. We're not, yeah. I don't think we're taught enough to sit in discomfort. And yeah. so we don't give it a chance to do what it can, what our body can do naturally if we yeah. do what it needs to and do. Why so, will it never get clear? Because all of the root causes are continuing to go unchecked and raging like oh, little yeah. furnaces in your body. So the drug's just making the symptom go away as much as it can, but it'll never fully get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And then you're, you're still not working on the internal things. It's like, do you want to be healthy? Do you not? I have come to the point in my career where when people say, well, my doctor wants me to do this. I just say, okay. That's well, yeah, that's, that's what I was like, you know, okay, like that's your my, choice. Yeah. Well, yeah kind like of the people that come to me as a practitioner, they're already paying me to tell them what to do. So I definitely tell them to, what to do, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they want it right. They're ready for it. But I just like the people, I just, I'm not in the business of convincing anymore. What I will say is, Oh, you know, if you're ever curious, there's a natural way to do that. But I just try not to, I used to be more of a, like, Oh, I really want to help oh, them. Like if I could just yeah, explain to yeah. them, like if I could just explain to them what's going on, then like maybe they would really want to do it. I, yeah. they don't. No. Oh, it's just a way, we, like, I've learned that, too. It's a way to of, like, hard. It, it is really hard. That's why now I just ask people, I'm like, did you read my website? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, and I'll say, yeah, I'll say if you ever, if you ever want, you know, I'm an naturopath, and I, I do specialize in that, so just know it's an option for you, and that's yep. all I say. Yep, that's awesome. You I know. need to get better with my wording. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I'm a little rough around the edges. <laughs> yeah, and oftentimes the people we want to help the most are the ones that don't want to listen, like, your close friends and family. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like those, those are the ones you're really like, it's hard to watch some things that are going on, but it's like, they just don't, but a complete stranger will fully trust you. You know, like that blows my mind. Like these complete strangers that don't know me will come to me and, and listen to everything that I say, yeah. but like, good luck getting, you know, my dad, oh, yeah, heart totally. medication like, or, hey. you know, watching my friend <laughs> want to keep giving the kids spray and, you know, but like so confused that he's only having a bowel movement every three days and he's, you know, five, like <laughs> there's just things. There's yeah, only so scary. much you can. Yeah. So it's like, I just wait and then people, you know, I just wait and sometimes they'll come around and approach me, but it's, it, that's the hard part. You want to help the people that are all, you know, around you closest to you that you're hearing these things from and you just, it's yeah, that's the hard part. Just a narrative. It's just a narrative shift or like a mind shift that needs, well, that doesn't, I mean, I think it needs to happen just for, I, but I just believe that because I'm like, what's more powerful than owning your health mm -hmm. instead of putting your health in the doc, into somebody's hands that gets to see you mm -hmm. maybe for 15 minutes every mm -hmm. year or six months. Right. Like, I don't know. There's to yeah. me, like, I want to speak for myself and I don't want to rely totally I mean, unless I got a gunshot yeah. wound or a broken leg, cool. Exactly. Like, it picks me up. That totally. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. But no, but, you're right. We live in a society where it's like, well, you just believe what the scientists do. Just believe what the doctors do. One of the scientists that I met last weekend was actually really adamant in teaching me that a doctor is not a scientist, by the way, you guys. No. Doctors learn the same as we all learn in school, and that is memorize this so that you can take a test. I'm not saying that they get a bad education or anything. I'm just saying like doctors 
the ones that are like running the CDC and the FDA that haven't even tr ever treated a patient, most doctors, they have, they don't really have an extra scientific degree outside of like the biology and the, um, you know, like the physics things that they the do in medical stuff. school, but yeah. they're not out there at labs and doing experiments. Like they are not scientists. They have very little training on vaccines, even less on diet. Uh -huh. And we literally in society are just like, well, listen to better listen to our doctor. Like we just have been trained to completely have no responsibility for our own health. Exactly. We problem. don't have a problem. Yeah. Yeah. We, That's exactly uh, what we're saying. Yeah. It's definitely been a, um, a, a shift in me because, you know, I, I, I've always kind of questioned it, but I think I've always kind of questioned authority in general. So, like, I've always kind of questioned things, like, when my mom was sick, and then when I started, like, having the problems, I was like, eh, that doesn't make sense, and, like, you know, they want to remove stuff from my insides, and I'm like, why? What do you do with it? Yeah. Like, why do you want to take it? Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> I was like, are you going to sell it on the black market? And they look at me like, no, you're not one of those patients. <laughs> yeah, you know what, though? All of our tissue that gets removed does go into a tissue bank that companies can purchase, like, cells from to do experiments and stuff, which I think is, you know, important in some ways, and I'm sure it's abused in other ways. But any tissue that is removed from our body, including abortions, gets sent to a tissue bank wow. where it is. See, I, was, I, was, I wasn't far you, off. <laughs> you were not, yeah. I was not far and I mean, off. in some cases, that might be used to, like, grow something to, you know, have, do something amazing, or it might be used for something more sinister. We don't really know. But, yeah, we don't waste anything in, in the U.S., I guess, <laughs> except for resources. <laughs> except for food. Resources. Except for food and resources, <laughs> yeah. But not <laughs> tissue. <laughs> anything we could do evil shit with. <laughs> yes, anything, any sort of thing with yeah. value, yeah, exactly. Oh. So uh, eczema is the overtoxin. I'm just going to wrap this up because I think okay. we've got eczema is uh, basically a, a toxic burden on our immune system. It's an overburdened that, immune overburdened. system. Yep. Overburdened yeah, so immune it's system coming out pressing through, through the skin. skin. Yes. Yep. You got okay. it. And then uh, your products, Hist the good baby products are the Histoclear and the, what, the what was the other one? And the Heat Clear. So that's the eczema kit spelled X-M-A kit. Yeah. Um, so those are safe for, for babies and kids just at a smaller dose. So um, anytime you pick up a bottle of a supplement in the United States, that dose is based on a 150 pound human being. Oh, wow. So wow. Um, just like, just as a fun fact, right? So if you are playing with Histoclear and the, the dose is supposed to be, you know, two caps three times a day, you can safely take a third of one cap and give it to a little one. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. So that's kind of what I, I've been learning a lot more of like the sneakiness of marketing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, stuff like that is interesting and they can say organic, even though it's not really organic, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Yeah. We just have to do our research. But I appreciate your time. Of course. Um, I won't. Uh, perioral dermatitis. Is that something that we can talk about next yeah. time? Yeah. Do you want to do that next time? Oh, yeah. Text me. We'll figure out. Love that. to. I love that one. Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Diana. Have okay. a super great day. You're welcome. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.